Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a racing and driving game in Unity and welcome to episode 9. So last episode we had a little problem in the end where when we started our game and switched our camera during the 3 to one countdown process, the audio would cut off and we'd have a warning in our console. So firstly, let's get that sorted. The reason that's happening is because when we switch our camera over, the original camera that we had, which is a normal cam, only contained the audio. So we're going to move that from normal cam into its own object within car. So if we take the car, right click, create empty, F2, and let's have this audio files. In there, we need to create another one, create empty, F2, let's have FX. And also again within audio files, we need another one, which is going to contain music because we're going to have our music for the actual level in this particular game object. So now what we need to do is if we click on get ready, hold control, click on go audio, drag them into effects. This won't have a difference, it won't make a difference on your countdown manager because it still links perfectly because the audio files are still the same game objects just moved within the hierarchy. So we can close up effects now. So we also want our game to contain some music. So let's bring in some music. In our audio down here, let's right click, create folder, and let's have music. And in here, I'm going to bring in this little song that I've composed within something called FL Studio. I'm not going to get into what FL Studio really is because it doesn't really have much to do with game development. It's just a program that you can program music in. It's nothing too fancy, to be honest. And we just need to drag and drop that into music, but let's create another game object and F2 and call this one level music and drag and drop that onto there. Now you could just leave the play on awake ticked as normal and have the audio play straight away when we start. But I don't want that. I only want the music to kick in once it's counted down from three to one. So to do that, we need to go into our script, which is in Countdown Manager. So if we click on it, go to the Inspector panel and double click the script there, it will open up in Modern Develop or Visual Studio. And what we'll do is we'll set a new variable here. So public audio source, and we'll call it level music, semicolon. And here where we have go audio dot play, let's just add in level music dot play. Open close bracket and save. And let's just make sure our level music is unticked, play on awake. So now let's test out our fixed cameras and the audio for the countdown and our music playing. So let's switch our camera with C and that's fine. Oh, we've actually forgotten to set our variable in countdown manager for the level music. So let's quickly drag and drop that onto there. And let's test that one out. Okay, perfect. That was how I wanted it to go. If you guys just want it play in from the very start, then you would just have play on awake and you just forget the last uh, two lines of code we've written. So next thing we want to do is when we cross the finish line, we want to save the lap time using something called player prefs. Now player prefs are a way of, think of it as a file within the Unity build that isn't accessible from the outside. Only Unity knows how to handle that file. So what we'll do, is we'll create a new script and we'll also modify our script which is on lap complete trigger. Let's start with lap complete. So if we open this script up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, and what we need to do is here where we've got lap time manager, we just need to go down a couple of lines and we need to save the player prefs. So player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quote we need to state kind of think of it as a file name so the first one is going to be min save close quote semicolon and now we need to specify what number we're going to put into this player pref and it comes from the lap time manager and the specific variable is the minute count so if we go back to lap complete and we need to put lap time manager dot minute count 
close bracket, semicolon. Same applies for the seconds. So player press dot set int. And in brackets and quotes, let's put sec save. And comma, lap time manager dot, and let's check it is second count. Second count there. Semicolon, sorry, close bracket, semicolon. And the last one is slightly different. So player prefs dot set float. And it is a capital F on that, even though we declare it as a lowercase f in lap time manager right there for millicount, it does need to be set as a capital F here. So in brackets and quotes, we need to put milli save comma and it's lap time manager dot milli count close bracket semicolon and save that script. So a player pref is going to be written to as we cross the finish line, all three of them, and then we're going to set them back to zero anyway. So make sure you do put the player pref set int and set floats before the lap time manager resets everything to zero. So when something has been set into a uh, player pref, it keeps it. Even when you stop playing, you stop the, the game, turn the game off, turn your computer off, it still retains that information. There is a way to reset player prefs, and we'll probably deal with that at a later date, but don't worry about resetting them just for now. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually make a script which allows us to display our newly saved uh, lap time. So to do that, we will create another c -sharp script. So right click, create c -sharp script, and we'll call this load lap time and let's open this up and because we're going to deal with ui with this at the very top we just need to put using unity engine dot ui semicolon so we're not going to use void update for this we're only going to use void start and we don't need that little note there so we're going to state six variables public int and it first one is min count semicolon, then public int sec count semicolon, and third one is going to be public float, and that's milli count semicolon, and then it's the same again but for the game objects which are on our canvas. So public game object, and it's going to be min display semicolon same again for the seconds public game object sec display semicolon and then public game object milli display semicolon so all we need to do is there's a two-step process to actually displaying our saved lap time firstly we need to get the values from the player press and set them to our integers. And then we need to display, uh, or rather integers and floats to our variables. And then we need to display those using the get component text line. So in void start, min count is equal to player press dot get int. And in brackets and quotes, we need to put whatever we save the file name as. So in this case, first one is min save min save semicolon and then next what we need to do is sec count equals player preps dot get int and it was sec save semicolon and finally for this section milli count is equal to player prefs perhaps have a spell it right dot get float remember that's also a capital f on there and in brackets and quotes milli save semicolon so we've loaded our player prefs in great now let's display them min display dot get component and in spiky brackets text 
open close bracket dot text equals for now we'll have double quote plus min count now in doing this it will make our um display looks slightly odd when we start the game up but don't worry about that at all you'll see what i mean as we get around to it get around to testing so sec display dot get component in spiky brackets text again open close bracket dot text equals double quote plus uh, sec count semicolon and finally milli display dot get component text close bracket dot text equals double quote plus milli display semicolon and save so you can see the process of what's going on here as we cross the finish line we're setting player press each and every time for now We'll get to a point where we only say, uh, set it if we do have a record time, but that's a script for another time. So for now, what's happening is when we press start, we're loading up whatever we have into our player prefs and then displaying them on the screen. So back into Unity, we need to create a new game object. Let's uh, right click, rename, and let's call it load lap time and drag and drop the load lap time script onto that object and then quickly set the variables in there. So they're in the canvas and panel. So milli display is there, sec display and min display. And I'm going to close up everything within the car just to kind of clear that. So we have more space in our um, hierarchy. And I'm gonna keep it on load lap time so we can hopefully see something load here. So now what we're gonna do is save the scene and let's test this out. Hopefully it should work. So we press play. You see what I mean? It's loaded a little bit funny, but don't worry about that at all. So let's play this now. I'm hoping this music isn't too loud for you guys. It seems quite blaring in my ears, but uh, the sound should be so bad. Oh, there's the AI pressing us. I've been saying for a couple of tutorials now that I'm going to sort a couple of things on live stream, but due to complications I've not been able to do a live stream, it is coming soon. Okay, so we've got best of 28.3 there, even though the AI computer kind of <laughs> passed that finish line, but again, that's something we'll get around to because we'll be using tags pretty soon. So I did notice that for some reason the mesh renderer is back on the lap complete trigger, but not to worry, let's turn that off. So hopefully when we press play now, we should be able to see our loaded time appear here and on the screen. So I think it's a case of working out what's going on here. So I'm going to press pause on the scene. I'm going to go to the canvas and let's go to milli display. You can see it's set as eight, but it's not quite displaying as, uh, sorry, it's this one, isn't it, Milly? Okay, so, how very strange. Do we see what's going on here? So for some reason, we can see the text in this is now equals to that. So let's just check what's actually going on here. So, I've put milli display there, so we just need to have that as milli count and save. So it's uh, all that's happened for me is I've got a little bit confused because some variables are very similar, so I've just mixed up the word count with display. So here it should say count, count, count. Save the script and let's unpause and start again. I'm going to quickly zoom in on my car. So now let's quickly set a new best lap time and hopefully we should be able to see that it is saving. So you can see there it has, it has saved, so we just need to modify our script a little bit more. So what needs to happen here is we need to have min display is blank plus the min count and then we also need to put plus and then a colon. And with the set count, we need to do plus dot and save. And hopefully 
it should look a little bit better now as we load up the game. Okay, so there we go. We're getting things looking quite nice now. So let's try and beat our best run time here. Seven. So when we load this up, it should say 21.7. Perfect. So that is how we can actually save our lap times. Now, going forward, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit more environment work. We're going to sort out a lap count, and we're also going to keep looking at saving our best lap time. So the best lap time is kind of resetting itself each and every time, even if it's not a best lap time. So we'll be sorting that out pretty soon as well. So guys, until the next episode, keep building your game. And if you want to show it off to me, maybe uh, let people see it on the live stream or anything like that, just let me know and we can probably arrange something. So guys, until next time, thank you very much for watching.